Red flag warning. Watch out for these red flags when making a real estate investment. You know, investing in real estate is the number one way to build wealth. But if you don't put the right fundamentals in place, it can also be the source of a lot of headaches and financial stress. Things that I've learned hard over the years and perfected, but it takes a lot to learn these things. I don't necessarily believe that there's a wrong way to invest because every mistake can serve as an important lesson in life. We only grow in our lives through challenges, right? That's why we're put on this earth, is to grow through discomfort, grow through challenges, but never discount the value in learning from those, right, that have gone before you. That's how we can mitigate and maybe lessen the challenges in your life, right? That's why we read books. That's why we study. You can save yourself a lot of time, money, and heartache if you buy right when you're getting started. Buy right. I'm happy to share some bumps in the road I've witnessed or personally experienced along the way. So today, I'm going to share five red flags to avoid when you're buying rental real estate. Number one, buying a rental property above the appraised value. Don't do it. I've heard so many investors over the last year specifically that have purchased rental properties above the appraised value. Please, never buy a property for more than it's worth. You wouldn't do that with gold, right? If it's if gold is worth this amount of money, why would you pay twice the amount or 30% more? You're more likely to lose money on your investment. You're losing out on the equity and you're going to have a higher monthly payment. Don't do it. There should never be a reason to buy above appraised value. Never. This is a major red flag. Number two, cash flow negative. A cash flow negative property generates less cash than it costs every month, meaning you're actually losing money. The bare minimum that you should be looking for is $100 in cash flow after all of your expenses are paid. Gary Keller in his great book, The Millionaire Real Estate Investor, likes to talk about at least making sure after all of your expenses are paid, mortgage is paid everything, that you're cash flowing at least $1. I like $100. I like a little bit more of a buffer zone there. But my point is, it should at least, at least be $100 in cash flow after all of your expenses are paid. But of course, more is always better. Maybe it's $200, $300, $400, right? That's the goal, of course. Buying a cash flow negative property can leave you vulnerable to a whole host of risks, not to mention stress. Being cash flow negative on an investment property is not going to help you reach your financial goals. It'll leave you in a panic month after month after month trying to pay your expenses. If you buy a cash flow negative property, you are basically setting yourself up to lose. Don't do it. And I really feel like the cash flow negative part of the story goes hand in hand with buying a property above the appraised value. Like to me, those two things are totally out of whack, but they seem to go together. You're buying a property for more than it's worth. Chances are that property is also going to be cash flow negative. Number three, sky high appreciation. If you're seeing crazy high appreciation on a rental property or in a rental market, to me, that is another red flag. That's not an area that I like to invest in. New investors sometimes make the mistake of thinking more appreciation is better, but that's not always the case. A solid investment will have good appreciation, but it's you know, it's going to happen at a slow and steady rate. I'm always worried about when I see this crazy appreciation in Vegas, and, you know, San Francisco we saw a few years ago, and Boise, Idaho, and all of these things. And then what happens? Then you see sudden major declines, major swings, and things get totally out of whack. I want boring. I want great markets. I want slow and steady. Number four, high vacancy rates. Stay away. Stay away from any property or neighborhood or city that has high vacancy rates. Why would you do it? There's so many things related to vacancies, right? Crime, job market is collapsing, people are moving. Why would you invest there? Even if you're able to secure a great tenant right out of the gate, maybe you got lucky. Chances are that eventually they're going to move out of your property. Tenant turnovers are one of the biggest expenses for investors. And that's the last thing you want is a long vacancy to prolong the experience and then eat into your returns. And not just one vacancy, but multiple vacancies or a stream, like a long period of vacancy because so many people are moving out of that town. So high vacancy rates, stay away in that town. Number five, tenant-friendly legislation. Trust me when I say that investing in a landlord-friendly state is a critical piece of smart investing. If you're considering investing in a state that doesn't favor landlords, to me, that is a huge red flag. 
Legislation can impact everything from evictions to security deposits and late fees. Buying right is going to set you up for success. And I hope these five red flags are going to help you guide you to a more smart and profitable investment. And if you're interested in learning more about making a smart investment, come on over to our website. It's morrisinvest.com. And our rental properties are located in America's best growth markets in the most landlord-friendly states. We believe in an individualized approach to investing that starts with learning about you and your goals. When we talk to you on the phone for the first time, we want to learn about what you want to achieve in your life. Do you want more time with your family? Do you want to spend less time on the commute to the job? Do you want to retire early? What is it? We want to learn about it. We love helping investors like you build wealth through rental real estate. To see if working together could be a good fit for you, all you need to do is schedule a free call on our website. Just click the big red button and uh, it says book a call. Select the time that's right for you and we will give you a call at that time. Do you want more educational content on making a smart investment? Then check out my next video right here on the best ways to buy real estate in 2024. And we'll see you next time.